guys. Welcome today. Um, I am so glad to be with you today. Um, thank you for for all the views, everything on YouTube that's been going on. It's been crazy. I am just amazed at God and what he's doing. Um, with my YouTube channel, on Facebook, the lives he's touching, I'm so beyond grateful. Now, let's pray. Father, I thank you for this moment. I thank you for what you've been doing and what you're about to do, God. You are just awesome in every way. Lord Jesus, today, as I talk about pace yourself, Lord, let me say something that will touch every life, every heart, every mind, oh God. Lord Jesus, let every word of my mouth come from you, come from the portal of heaven. Lord Jesus, saturate us, be with us in our lives, oh God, in a special way. And to say something to us in our different circumstances that will change all of our lives. Whether we're going through good good times or challenging times, you can do that, Lord. Speak to me, speak through me in the name of Jesus. I me behind the cross. Amen. Um, I was... I was, um, first of all, let me start with a story. Um, I got the wrong Amazon package uh, um, at my door on Tuesday night. Um, yeah, it was Wednesday night I got the wrong Amazon package. And I didn't know what to do. Uh, so me, I was, I, when something like that happens, I always try to put myself in, in that same situation. If I was waiting for a package and it said it showed up, but it never came, um, it was meant at first, um, the late the ladies that came that night couldn't see what was on the package, so uh, when they read it, it wasn't exactly right. Um, so the next morning, uh, the the lady that came that morning read it, and it turned out that it was meant for the apartment next door. Um, and I was like, okay, uh, but there were two problems with this. Um, me, the, the one problem is because of my vision issues and me, I'm not legally blind, but let's just say I have vision issues in my peripheral vision. So... It's hard for me to walk on the street by myself. Uh, you see some people zooming in their chairs and stuff. That's not me. So it's hard for me to even uh, walk, um, come in my chair a, f a few um a few kilometers or meters by myself. And the other problem with that was the building next door is not wheelchair accessible. So even if I was, um, if I could get in, I wouldn't, even if I could go there physically, I couldn't get into the building. So, um, so I was discussing with, um, one of the late, one of the ladies, um, 
uh, in the morning about like um, the package was like told her about the package, told her why it was there, told her it wasn't for me, you know, just so that she she wouldn't think it was for me, and she was. Uh, she was just very negative. She's like, well, what are you going to do? I said, well, take it down to the office. She said, well, they may not take it. What are you going to do? Do you just, like... And it was all this negativity, negativity, negativity. Um, And I was like... And she made me second guess myself about about what I'm going to do with the package and I said cuz um our office the the uh, the building office is um is outside the door and you turn to to the right, and then there is the building office, and the building office, for some reason, I don't know, but it doesn't have accessible, like, it's not, it doesn't have accessible, um, an accessible button, don't ask me why, there are so many people with disabilities that live in my building. It's not only people with disabilities that live in my building, but there are so many people. Not only the clients of Tobias House, which is the organization uh, that gives gives me care. They give several other people care, but it's not only them, but uh, it's a lot of seniors, too, that live in my building, so I don't know why there's not a button there. Anywho, there's not a button on uh, the the door. So she's like, how are you going to get in and blah, 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 G- giving me all this negativity, making me second guess what I'm going to do. Have you ever been confident of something, but when you talk to somebody, tell them about it, they bring every negative thing about it, and they call it realism. But negative negativity is not realism. Realism is a balance of I know you want to do this, but let's figure out. I know there's a challenge to to this. I know you want to do it, but here's the challenge. Let's figure out how to overcome the challenge. That's realism. Realism never only looks at one side, but that's another story. I'll get to that later. So... Um, so, so she was coming at me with, well, you, you can't do that, because she's been working with me for years. Um, most of the ladies, um, that work for the organization that I live have been working with me for years, and, you know, but she made me, um, her negativity made me second guess what I, how I was going to get the, uh, what I was going to do with the package. She's like, well, nobody's going to take, nobody's going to take it if I leave it in the lobby. I said, I'm not going to leave it in the lobby. I said, you know what? I'll just deal with it later. So I got up, I got her to put the package on my tray. I... So, and I got my door opener. I went downstairs full of her negative thoughts. And as I was, this is, 
this is a God story because as I was coming down the elevator, uh, filled with all her negative thoughts, there were two gentlemen in the elevator with me. They were going going downstairs to the lobby, and I and I and I asked them, um, "Could you please help me um, get into the office outside?" They said, "Sure." And because the office outside has two doors. There's an an outer door and there's another door to get into the actual office. When the gentleman opened the outer door, there was, I didn't even have to go in the office, guys. The secretary saw me and she opened the inner door and said, yes, how can I help you? So, I, no, so, um, oh, I should back up, sorry. So, after the lady that got me up left, I called the office downstairs and said, I got this package, mistaken, mistakenly um, put it at my door. It's the right apartment number, but wrong address. And I can't go over there because I'm a little unsteady because of my vision. And that person said, um, okay, we'll, we'll just, I'll send the super up to get the package. And I had already had uh, the package on my tray at the at that point. So when I hung up with her, I said, "You know what? I'm not waiting." So I bumped into the two gentlemen. The gentleman let me into the outer door from the outer door, and before he could open the inner door, the secretary came and said, um, she, she partially opened the door and said, how can I help you? So I explained to her what happened. She said, I'll take it. And she took it and it was okay. And then when I wanted to get in the building now, um, I have a door opener, but it turned out that the button to get into the actual building of my door opener wasn't working. But not even a second after I tried and it wasn't working, somebody came along, somebody that I knew that lived in the building came along and let me in to the building. So I said all that to say, when God has purposed you to do something, when you are doing the right thing, and when you are pro processing through the right thing, even if you have, have limitations, God will make sure that the resources are there. So, because he knows, when the ladies told me at night some something came to my door, and I realized that I didn't order anything from Amazon, and the package wasn't for me, I was working it through my mind, saying, okay, I could do this, I could do that, I could call Amazon and tell them that they delivered a faulty package. They delivered a package that wasn't for me, you know, blah, blah, blah. Or I could take it over. I could 
try and make my way over slowly, but what if, what if, uh, uh, oh, but I remember the building was not wheelchair accessible, and I was like, I can give it to my neighbor, ask him to take it over. I was trying to work all these circumstances to my mind because I knew my limitations and I knew um, what needed to, that that person needed to get their package and the building was right next door. So it wouldn't make sense to call Amazon and get them to deliver it right next door. Um, So the Lord knew that I was trying my best with my limitations to to work it through. And he had the resources when I needed them to make sure that package got to the attendant, uh, got to the office, got to the building office um, so that it could be d- delivered to the right building and hopefully get to the person. Because I put myself in that situation. What if I, because I order packages from Amazon too. Not every month or whatever. But I do order packages from Amazon. So what if it was me in that situation that needed a package from Amazon? Because the account would say delivered and that I wouldn't see my package. I would keep checking my account. My account would say it was delivered. And, um, but, but I wouldn't see it. So um, Amazon would say, if I called Amazon, they would say, oh yes, we delivered it this morning. We delivered it last night. And I still wouldn't see it, so I would be, where is my package? So I put myself in this person's situation. And the Lord and I was like, I need to get this package uh, to this person. So I started working working through my mind and, and worrying about it. I'm like, how do I do it? And whatever, what do I do? And um, but all that worrying was for nothing. And that person's negativity just just um, just added fuel to added doubt to what I was going to do. So it made me worry more. And look, God had the resources available for me to get that package to the office. And somebody at the office took it down to the other building. So so sometimes we worry when it comes to purpose, but we have to know that the Bible's right so when it says all things work together for good to those that love the Lord and are called according to his purpose. So the Lord knew I was not the kind of person to keep the package or to just get somebody to take it down to the lobby because I I wouldn't want just my package to be left down in, in the lobby. A letter is different. A letter is different because people come down there all the time. And, you know, for me, even I check if there are leftover letters. But a package, no. Especially a package from the wrong building. So the person wouldn't get that. And and what if it was very important for them to get it? So 
that's what, um, and I was thinking about this. I was thinking that many of you out there may have um, people that are um, negative about your dreams. You're so excited and you're, and you're wanting to tell them about that and wanting to ask for advice or get encouragement and they're like, no. And they, and they shoot, and they shoot down your dreams right away because they think they're helping you. They, they say, oh, I'm just being real. I'm just being realistic. I'm a realist. No, a realist is balanced, not just one negative side and that's all, be real or whatever. No, that's not realism, that's pessimism. And that's a spirit that needs to go, that's what it is. Realism is you take a look at the bad and you take a look at, no, you take a look at the challenge and you take a look at the good, and you b balance it out and see what's possible. Because there is, there is always a solution. What I like to say is there's a strategy for every struggle. There's a solution for every single problem. And you may need help, you may need resources, but it's not hopeless. And I'm telling you, to not give up, not give up, and know that when you get to where you're going, God has the right resources, and you don't have to worry or stress about what, what, whatever. Worrying and stressing is, is natural, but, um, you don't, you don't have to, because God has every resource available for you. And also this week too, I was, um, I was thinking about pacing yourself for the season. Because some, some people go at one pace all the time. Like they do things fast or they do things slow and they don't pay attention to where they are. So let's say a person can have two jobs. One job you have to go quickly because that's the pace of that job. You have to go quickly, you have to go fast because it's a fast-paced job. The other job you can kind of take your time and mosey, but you're you're going quickly at that job because that's the pace you're you're used to from your other job where you have to go fast. But at that job where you don't have to go fast, you're still at that same pace. And I was thinking about this because of a situation in my own life, and it, it made, um, and then I was like, pacing is so important, knowing where you are is so important, knowing who you're with is so important, and uh, adjusting yourself to the situation is so important. I often think about if I was preaching at a church. Um, I was thinking about this the other day. If I was preaching at a church, uh, what differences I would do? First of all, I would have a scripture. And then I'd have to examine the text and whatever. It would be... It would still be me, but it would be a different style of preaching. And then I would have a, um, 
a uh, a, a illustration to go along with my sermon because that's the, I love illustrations and I would have to have assistance with that. I would have people, um, I would have a person type up notes for me to know exactly where I'm going because in in a church setting, first of all, you only have limited time. And second of all, you it, it requires more structure because you want to get all these points. So preaching on YouTube, I can afford to to uh, hem and haw and get there and say, wait a second or whatever. But when you're preaching in the church, you can't do that. So that's why I would have to have notes and a little bit more structure because of where I'm preaching. And I'd have to get to the to the point that God that that God wants me to say more quicker because I would have less time. Whereas preaching on YouTube or Facebook, I can take my time, I can him and ha, not because uh, you guys are less worth it. No, you're not. You are so important to me. No, but it's because I have more time. I can, I can uh, go into it. I can, you know, uh, goof up. And you, uh, you guys are forgiving. I can uh, read slow. I can say, hold on a second, or say I'm a lot and whatever. In a church, you can't do that because you may only have um, f- 40 minutes or you may have an hour and a half depending on the church and the pastor. But it's, it's best because you need structure when you're pre- you need more structure when you're preaching in the church. Whereas preaching on YouTube, I can take my time and meander and joke with you guys and all that. And not that I can't do that in the church, but, it, but when you're preaching in the church, it requires structure. And the same thing it, as if you're in a business meeting, versus if you're at at home. If you're in a business meeting and you only have 20 minutes to to preach, uh, you need to get get your points uh, within those 20 minutes and you need to have a plan whereas if you're if you're in a casual setting, let's say you're talking to a business colleague, you're talking to them in a casual setting, and you have more time, you can joke, you can laugh, you can do all all that kind of thing. So it's all about, let's, it's all about knowing where you are and what you are supposed to do in that moment. And let's go from the natural to the spiritual. The, there is a moment and you need to pace yourself for the season. You need to you need to understand that this season is not like last season. Like, um, uh, summer is not like winter. Summer, you need different clothes. 
you need di it's a different weather. It's a whole different thing. Summer, you could go out in flip flops and shorts. Whereas in winter, you need your coat, you need your hat, you need your scarf. The tools are different for each season. The weather is different for, for each season. And the difficulty spiritually is that we're all in different seasons. Some of us, God is bringing us to a different season. God is teaching us all different things. God is, God is uh, doing all kinds of different things in our lives. And we, we have to know what season it is and where we are and what pace to go out at for that season. Because go at the wrong pace wear the wrong clothes, do do the wrong thing, and you will miss what's going on in that season. And the only way you can know what's going on in the season of your life and what God wants you to know from what he doesn't, whether he wants you to stay or go and move, or what clothes he wants you to wear, is to ask him, really seek the Lord for what he's doing in your individual life, and sometimes corporately too, because sometimes corporately, um, where uh, church-wide, where you are, God is doing something spiritual that he's not doing in another place. So sometimes he's doing something um, in one province uh, that he's not doing in another province. And the people of that province need to b buckle down and know what what he's doing in their province. I live in Canada, so we have provinces, not states. Um, the same thing with states, though. He could be doing something in Alabama that he's not doing in New York, and so, so on and so forth. And the people of that region need to be aware of what he's doing or what, what, what spiritual entities are are attacking or which way to go in that region. And also, not only regionally, but worldwide, sometimes he's doing in countries, he's doing, he, he, he purposed something for the U.S. that he hasn't purposed for Canada, or he's purposed for Canada, something that he hasn't purposed for the U.S. And we need to have our ears open, not only to what he's doing generally worldwide, but in the region, he may have people of that region pray for something that people of another region don't have to pray for. You know, um, so he wants us to be aware of the pacing of our lives individually, um, nationally, and internationally, and to pray um, uh, specifically, and to be aware of what season we are in. Are we in hat, coat, coat, and glove season? Or are we in a uh, a short and shorts and flip flops and t shirts season. So and we need to go at the pace of that season. So you can't you if you love summer, you can't uh rush uh winter away by wearing uh t shirts and flip uh, flip flops in winter. You'll just freeze. It's the wrong clothing. 
You cannot rush ahead the seasons. You you just need to walk it out. Whether it's a difficult season for you or whether it's a great season for you. You just need to walk it out. Learn the lessons that God has God has uh, set aside for you to learn. Learn those lessons and and know that everybody's pace is different. And today he's saying, pace yourself. Just because you're at a job that, just because your first job is a job where you speed through, doesn't mean that's the way you should operate in that second job, you have to learn to adjust and adapt to the season. Because without adjusting and adaptation, you'll be lost and you'll be struggling. The Lord is calling for you to know the season of your life, know the season of your world, Know the season of even your country. Know the season of your children. Because seasons change. They don't last forever. But when you're in a season, just know that not only God is with you, but he'll never leave you alone in that season. And even if you don't see it, he's working. His He's in the room. And his spirit is always abiding in that season. And he's saying right now to pace yourself. Don't be worried about what was last season, whether it was great or challenging. Don't be worried about what's in the next season. Plan for it, but don't be worried about about it. What, but you, what you need to do is focus on the season, and he, he will, he will bring the plans to you that you need to make. You don't need to worry about it. He has resources for the, se- for whatever season you're in, and don't let people's de- negativity stop you. Remember what what I said about being real. Being real is taking stock of both sides, not only the negative side, the negative side, and the positive positive side. I should say the challenging side and the and the positive side, because nothing is really negative. People are, we live in challenging times, but the challenging times are learning are learning times. Challenges are the best teachers. So I don't like to say negative and positive. I like to say positive and challenging. So, because in the challenges you learn. So... Whether you're in a challenging season or a positive season, you take stock of both. And in a balanced way, you find the solution. And and you might not even know what the solution, solution is, but God does. I didn't know how I was going to get the Amazon package to that person. I didn't even know how I was going to get um, out downstairs and outside. But God knew that those gentlemen were in the elevator and that they would help me outside. Um, and God knew that this I wouldn't even have to come into the inner office, that the secretary would just be there and take the package from me right away. And when I 
couldn't get in the building because my door opener wasn't working. Uh, not even two seconds later, someone was there to help me. So God sent the resources because God saw my heart. You see, sometimes um, when we have the when we have the right intention, God sees our heart. We don't have the resources, we don't have the know-how, but we have the idea, and it's purposed by God. And anything that's set up by God, anything that's purposed by God, he has the resources. And he's saying, don't worry about the resources. Just go, and I will provide uh, what you need. I will provide those resources that you're worried about. I will provide the money. I will provide the re the strategy. And like I said before, there are strategies for every struggle. And the Lord has a specific strategy for your struggle. And in time, you will see the strategy. You will see God. The Lord says right now, he said, Go, and you will see me. He's saying, for some of you, you've been afraid for too long. You've been scared for too long. And I just need you to go. God says, go to some of you. God says, go to some of you. And to some of you, he's saying, stay and do a little bit more research. Some of you are just the opposite. Some of you like to rush ahead uh, without thought as soon as God gives you an idea. But he's saying, this idea requires research. This idea requires thoughts. Thought. This idea requires people that can give you the resources, and I will send the people. So... Now is not the time for you to go. Now is the time for you to to uh, work on the resources, R- research, read the books, go to school, get all the knowledge you can, because this season in your lives requires knowledge, requires understanding requires, you know, proper, um, proper strategy, and for, for these people, you, you guys need to, need to strategize. And read books and go to school and get knowledge. And and the Lord will provide the resources. The Lord will provide the books that you need or the money that you need. Or the strategy to get the money that you need. So you need to pace yourself for that for the season you can't go too fast and miss god and you can't go too slow and let let god pass you you need to pace yourself for the season so guys thank you so much take care bye